The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's webinar, the latest instalment in Ant Hill's Undie Empire webinar series sponsored by Citrix GoToMeeting. Today, the focus of our webinar will be on Facebook, how to use the world's largest social network as a business tool without looking like a tool, we hope. My name is James Tuckerman and I will be your presenter and teacher and facilitator today. Now, before we get started, while the latecomers continue to shuffle into the back rows, I'd like to show you how you can interact with us today. At the side of your screen, you will see a question, a questions box. We'll be having a Q&A at the end, but we'll also be inviting participation and interaction throughout today's webinar. So let's test this out. Why don't we start with some of your favorite commercial Facebook fan pages? Your favorite commercial Facebook fan pages. So what do I mean by that? If there's a Facebook fan page that you're a fan of, that you have liked, that was created by a business or a brand, just tap out that name. Perhaps it's a personal fan page or a human brand. That counts too. Oh, they're coming in fast. Charmens, SEO Moz, oh, Antil, thank you. Red Balloon, oh gee, they're really fast. Aussie Inc by Todd Miller. Monday Motivatable Minute. Deals United by Dale Hansen. George Takei, Phil Gutteridge, I love George Takei. Entice Me, Jay Donaldson has suggested that. Victoria's Secret, should I say who suggested Victoria's Secret? Well, it's a Chris. I'm not going to say your last name, Chris, just in case. Katut, double AMI, Craig Eastwood, Peppermint Magazine. Wow, there are all sorts of, uh, all sorts of different things going on here. Uh, <laughs> Chris has said thanks, sarcasm. Norton Street, Italian Fiesta, Marjorie Anson. RM Williams, Outback. Wow, that's interesting. Kel Kelly... Broderick is fanning a Facebook fan page that's about shoes. There you go. And of course, uh, Jump On It by Lena Mathai, a whole bunch of them just coming in fast. JB Hi-Fi by Robin. Kindness Trust by Philip, Philip Bateman. Many, 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 many. Um, I'm, I'm wondering whether anyone here has their own Facebook fan page. So this is your chance for to tap in your own business Facebook fan page. And if I can get it, if I can say them, I will. I'll say them and I'll yell them all out and let's see how we go in terms of being able to give you a plug. Wow, that's fast. MCS Mobility, Hygiene Feeds, Deals Mix, Flood Sacks, Bendigo Toyota, Evolve Network Australia, Angie and again, oh, to be stylish. Uh, Tease.com.au, wow, uh, they're coming in thick and fast. I might have to take a screen grab and put them somewhere else. Wow. If you'd like to engage with us also on Twitter today, the hashtag is UndieEmpire, hash UndieEmpire. Now, a bit of a confession, I'm flying solo today, so I won't be able to engage with you on Twitter while I'm also doing this. I also might have a little bit of trouble getting to everyone's questions in a timely way. I'll do my best, but we'll save it to the end. This also means that if there's something that seems weird or strange or something goes unusual with the audio or the vision, you let me know, okay? You let me know, just tap something in because I'm counting on you to, uh, to, uh, to, to keep me posted if there's anything unusual with regards to the technology today. All right, so what are we talking about? Well, we are talking about Facebook for business, and this is the sort of stuff that we're going to be covering today. I call it my Facebook loop because it's the strategy that we use at Antil and we've helped other organizations use to, to master their Facebook account. To break it down simply, or more specifically, how to master Facebook for business, more specifically, I'm going to cover three tips to help create a self-building, largely self-managing, monetizable Facebook prospect base. Now, there's a couple key words there that I want you to pay attention to. Um, these are words like monetizable and prospect. Because the funny thing about Facebook, um, as you may have heard, and I think we talked about it in the promo materials, Facebook is often described as the largest pub, what's it, the, inter, the largest pub of the world on the internet. It's, it's the social media pub, uh, whereas LinkedIn's all about business. Uh, Twitter is usually about uh, headlines and uh, the dissemination of news and updates. Facebook is, is very social. 
the pub of the internet. So a lot of people underestimate it and look beyond its value as a business tool. However, when you look at the statistics of how Facebook's been used and who's using it, you'll discover interesting statistics such as in the context of Australia, where we are right now, if you're listening from listening in from overseas, uh, Australia has a population of about 22 million. In Australia, there are a, around 11 million Facebook users. So that's uh, close to it, it, the population is a little bit over 22 million. So it's close to half the population. But when you look a little bit deeper, you actually find that that um, the active population, that's people who are not very old, very very young. Um, the criminally insane, um, what have you, the active population is around 16 million. So we're talking about 11 million of 16 million. That's, that's a significant number. So to say that your customers are not using Facebook, I actually think is, is slightly short-sighted. It's almost like saying they don't watch television or they don't listen to the radio. And given declining radio and TV statistics, I, I don't think that's, a, that's a, an unfair claim. Um, how am I in terms of audio? Someone's just suggested that they lost audio. Can, can anyone tell me if that's uh, limited to one person? Audio is good. Audio is fine. Audio is great. Okay. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it happens. It's the individual line. Wow, that's a lot of people keeping me posted. Thank you, all of you. So moving on. The, four t the three topics I'm going to cover today are quick cheats to manage a Facebook fan page, easy cheats to build it, a Facebook fan page and what I think is the smart way to monetize a Facebook fan page. All right? Manage, build, monetize. But before I kick off, but before I kick off, I think it's always important that I answer that question, what gives me the authority to talk about Facebook as a business tool? How can you trust this dude in the wacky hat and the uh, mascot, ant's head mascot, James Tuckerman. Um, well, often uh, you, you often hear people talk about these things and uh, particularly conferences and like, I always like to know that they've done it themselves. They've always done it themselves. So, so this, is, this is where we came from. We used Facebook for a long time. Uh, we just had a Facebook fan page. It just sat there. We probably pointed to it from our home page and did the basics. Um, oh, thank you, Christine Kane, saying that I look trustworthy in that photo. I think I look dodgy as, but anyway. So for a long time we used it, and it crept up slowly and surely as it should. We're a media organisation, and by August 26, 2011, we had 1,800 monthly active users. Now this is not fans. This is active users because you know what? Someone can fan you or like you and then just basically block you from their feed anyway. So they're a fan, but they're not engaging with you. Um, so active users is actually a better judge of whether you're using it well. So here we were on uh, August 26, 2011, and we had 1,800 monthly active users. Jump ahead approximately 90 days, and we'd gone from late August, the last days of August to the first day of December, so it's about 93 days, to four and a half thousand monthly active users. What I'm going to be talking through today are the way that we used, uh, that we used Facebook, to, Facebook to get to that point, the, the tools that we use to get to that point, and also how we manage it so it doesn't take over our lives, and also suggest some ways that you can turn it into a business tool. Uh, a couple of people have asked, is there notes or a video available on this webinar after? The answer is yes, Wayne. Uh, I will be providing the slides. Um, and hopefully an audio, a video recording of what you're seeing right now, and hopefully some links to some of the tools I'm going to be using. Yes, Will Todd, hurrah! Megan Edwards, Edwards, I hope that is awesome. Awesome means likely to inspire awe. So <laughs> might be an overkill, but anyway, there you go. So that's where we went. So I'm going to start off with this word manage. How do we manage? Now the problem is when you use something like Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, it can fairly quickly take over your life. Now when you start using these tools, yes, there is a fairly intensive learning curve and it will take up your time. But if you do it well and you manage it well, sooner or later you get to a point where it can largely look after itself. And that's the way that I now use Facebook. I use it in a way where it's largely self-managing and I'm going to show you how I do it. 
Okay, when I talk about managing, I'm generally talking about populating your Facebook fan page, adding status updates, because it's the status updates, the content that you add to your Facebook fan page that keep people engaged with you. Also, if you're doing it well, they like what you say, and when they like what you say, that appears on their own page, which other people can see, or if they really, really like it, they really, really like it, they might share it, and then they're sharing it with all their friends, and that's how you get the viral amplification effect of Anthill. Right, so the three two tools I use, the first one, I'm going to start with the obvious. Now, okay, has anyone heard of Pinterest? Of course you've heard of Pinterest. It's about the fastest growing social media network uh, the world has uh, the, the world seen over the last uh, six to six to twelve months. Essentially, it's a it's a it's a, a social media network where people just simply pin images that they like. They pin images that they like, and the funny thing that happens is that some people follow people who like images that they like. But what it's ended up building is this astonishingly good resource that you can turn to when trying to find images. Now, why is this important? Well, the thing is about Facebook is that it's a very, um, it's, 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 it's a very visual environment. Status updates are short, they're sweet, and you can, uh, hopefully sweet, and you can add images. Um, and images seem to be a, a, a powerful technique to engage with fans very quickly and also get that viral amplification effect that I'm talking about. So for example, here's just something that we threw up in January onto our Facebook fan page before the timeline change. Now I thought that this was interesting because you know Antil is about innovation, entrepreneurship, business in Australia and we threw up an image that, that I'm pretty confident we found on Pinterest. And it's a little flowchart and it says, are you happy? And if you say yes, it says keep doing what you're doing. If you say no, it says do you want to be happy? And if the answer is no, you keep doing what you're doing. And if the answer is do you want to be happy, and the answer is yes, it says change something. So it's a little flowchart, very interesting. In the you know just short, sweet, happy. Not about business, but in the new year, there's a lot of business people that are thinking about how they want to do things differently. Um, this particular one uh, pretty quickly got 44 people liking it if you can see that, 44 people liking it, and 20 shares. Now, 44 people liking it, that's great. So anyone looks at their profile can see that they like it. But the 20 shares is more significant because if the average Facebook user has, I don't know, 140, uh, 140 friends, I think it's more than that now, but for a long time it was about 140. What's 20 times 140? Does anyone want to tap that in? Do my maths for me? My maths is terrible. 20 times 140, 2,800. Thank you, Michael Morgano. Or Megan Barrow cuts it down to a lot. That's right. So 20 people shared this and ended up sharing it with 2,800 people. That's what I call viral. Now, around this time, I was at a lunch. I was at a lunch listening to the global CEO of NetSuite, uh, Zach Nielsen, talk about cloud computing. And he made an observation, every business is now a cloud business. I thought it was interesting, so I wrote, hit like if you agree, right? That's what I wrote. There's a little comment. You can see it at the bottom of there. Two other people liked it. Two other people like it. So my little, uh, my little uh, mascot there, antagonist, wrote, me thinks the question was too cerebral for Facebook. And then to uh, really hammer the point home to the, uh, to the people I was showing this to at the time, I threw up a picture of a hedgehog, and it says hedgehogs. Why don't they just share the hedge? No. Um, 13 people like that, and that was one share in a very short period of time. Now, that's not a business message. I was just doing that to, uh, to demonstrate my point. To further demonstrate my point, I'm going to try something risky here. I'm going to bounce out of my presentation straight onto our Facebook wall. Fingers crossed. Let's see if this works. Is it going to work for me? The shortcut's not going to work. So I'm going to have to jump online and do this manually. You're going to have to watch me jump into Facebook for a moment. Folks, that's okay. Isn't this exciting? This is what happens when you do things live. Okay, here's our Facebook fan page. Here's just something that I want you to check out. On Monday, we threw up a picture, Monday Inspiration, Bring on the Crazy. 
and it was a little image that was plucked from Pinterest. I'm going to succeed because I'm crazy enough to say, I'm going to succeed because I'm crazy enough to think I can. Cool sentiment. I love it. Our readers loved it. So what was the outcome? 72 people liked this. You can see who some of them are. But 72 people also shared it. Okay, what's 72 times 140? I don't know. Once again, yes, Megan Barrow, it is a lot. It is a lot. Okay, so moving back to the presentation and moving on. Now, someone has said, what are the, what are the rules around sharing things? Oh, there you go, Chris Maris. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's over 10,000. Someone's asked, what are, the, what are the rules about sharing Pinterest? At the moment, there are no rules. But what we try and do if the... Uh, well, there's no rules as far as I'm aware. Someone can, someone can correct me wrong, but however, there are always issues about copyright. Now, Pinterest is also in a grey area and they're struggling how to manage this stuff as well too. But what we try and do is we try and give attribution wherever we can. Sometimes there's no, there's no, there's no clear path to attribution, so it's very hard to do that. But what we try and do is we try and give attribution. So the four, first tool I'd recommend is Pinterest, or ammo. The second tool I want to demonstrate the second tool I want to uh, talk about is called Post Planner App. Now, what Post Planner App allows you to do is it allows you to schedule your status updates. Now, why might you want to schedule your status updates? Because the more you use Facebook, the more you will discover that there are certain times where the traffic is hot. That there are tra traffic is hot, and they are times like 8:45 in the morning when people get to work, they log on, they check on their Facebook account. Uh, 12 to 12.30, people are you know, having a quick peek before they go to lunch. 4.15 to 5.15 when they finish work, they are hot times. There's another hot time as well too, which is about 5.30 to 6.30 on Sunday afternoons. So, so if you are planning on using Facebook um, and you want to upload images and whatever or information that's of interest to your target audience, um, Gee, it's a hassle to jump on at 8.45 in the morning, 12, 5, 15, say it's a Sunday afternoon. You don't want to quit hanging with the kids, rush inside and put something on the internet. No, you don't. So I use Post Planner app, which allows me to schedule my updates. So instead of spending jumping on every six hours, every four hours, what I can do is I can spend half an hour on a Monday morning or whenever suits me and I schedule my status updates uh, to uh, to um, can schedule my updates uh, straight to um, straight to Facebook. Someone's pointed out that you can now do that from straight from Facebook. Now I really hope so. Um, I'll have to check that out, Michael Morgano, and get back to you. That sounds very exciting and interesting. But at the moment, I use Post Planner app. I uh, I'm also so lazy I outsource it to somebody, and uh, that's how it looks. You know when it appears on the page. Now, interestingly, and I will point this out, out in a moment, uh, when you schedule something or automate it, you reduce page rank, but I'm going to explain why I don't think that's such a big deal. The third tool I use is one called the Networked Blogs app. Now, this is um, particularly helpful, well, it's only helpful if you have a blog or if you know of blogs that you know that your audience are going to die for. So what this allows you to do is it, 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 it allows you to schedule, it allows you to syndicate blogs from your blog to your Facebook fan page. If you don't have a blog, no big deal, just you know, block your ears for a second and go, no, 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 this is not appropriate to you. Or if you know of someone else who has a blog, so for example, you know that your fans just love the Seth Godin blog, well, you can syndicate his blog to your Facebook fan page and it ends up looking like this. So in our world, what we can do is we syndicate only blog posts that we categorize or tag as Antil TV because we know our fans on Facebook like the things that we put on Antil TV and it's business related but it's a lot more fun. Okay? I mentioned before that it's always best for engagement and edge rank purposes to post manually. So, so two of those tools are actually automated tools. They allow you to schedule stuff 
Now, EdgeRank is Facebook's, kind of like Facebook's version of PageRank, if you understand Google. The higher that your EdgeRank it gives you to any status up, the higher the EdgeRank it gives to any status update that you add to your Facebook fan page, the more of your fans are going to see it the more widely it's going to be disseminated. Now, I don't know how its algorithms work, but I know that it knocks off some edge rank points if, it's, if you use an automated tool. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you are scheduling and syndicating awesome content, awesome, likely to inspire, or compelling, compelling to your target market, they will like it and they will share it. And that is far more powerful than the edge rank, what edge rank can give you. So if you're focused on providing something that's compelling uh, to your target audience uh, and they share it and they like it, you're going to get far more clout and amplification than you ever would um, just relying on, uh, on, on edge rank. So edge rank is great if, you can sh if, it, if it can share it to more people, but it's far more powerful if you can, if you can add status updates that your fans are going to share. By the way, have you noticed yet that none of the things that I've pointed to are actually sales messages? Hmm, interesting, that. So that's populating your page. The next thing I wanted to cover was building, building your page. All right, so what am I, what am I talking about building? I'm not talking about manually constructing it or anything like that. Facebook makes it very easy to create a Facebook fan page. I'm talking about... Uh, building your fan base, building your fan base. So when it comes to building your fan base, there's a couple things that, uh, that I strongly suggest. In fact, if I was to look back and think about all the different things that we did, this was probably the most significant in getting fans. Can anyone guess what I'm about to talk about? I'm going to see, see if we've got any astute people on the line. Ads, Michael Morgano has, uh, Morgano has suggested. Michael, you mean prolific today. Um, ads is part of an equation. Good content, that's definitely essential. Competition suggested Phil Guttridge. They're all very good. Funny stuff. Yes, funny stuff does work. Uh, but it also depends on your target audience. It has to be funny to your target audience. Here's what we created. We created a calling card. We put it behind a like to see tab and we pointed all marketing to it including ads and I'm going to show you what it looks like. That there is a calling card. So if you're going, what's a calling card? What's a calling card, James? And I'll see if I can drag this across and zoom, in, zoom into it. A calling card is an item of high perceived value to your target audience. Now, does anyone want to tell me what a PDF and a white, uh, what a white, what a, I've blown my, I've blown my question. Does anyone want to tell me what a white paper and an e, and an ebook have in common? I've said this before on another, uh, on another webinar. Does anyone want to tell me what a white paper and an ebook have in common? What do a white paper and an ebook have in common? Thank you, Shanti. They are both PDFs. They're both basically Word documents that you save as a PDF. Now that there can be a super powerful lead magnet. It's essentially an item of high perceived value that's going to be attractive to your target audience. It's an item of high perceived value that is attractive to your target audience. So it could be an ebook, it could be a white paper, it could be something like that. Now what I just showed you there was one of the uh, one of the ebooks that uh, that we used that was highly appealing to our target audience. It was an ebook on how to raise uh, venture capital, and we sought permission from a guy called Tom McCaskill, who's a bit of a genius. You probably have heard of him before, and uh, we made that available to anyone who was. Uh, we made that available on our Facebook fan page to anyone who liked us, which is the purpose of the like to see tab. Let me take it one step further. So we created a calling card, an item of high perceived value to our target market, and then we put it behind a like to see tab. What's a like to see tab? It looks something like this. It's a landing page within your Facebook fan page which invites someone to access what you have to offer, but in return they must like you. So in this example here, what we did is we, uh, we had a video, and you may have seen it, it's a fantastic video, it's a three minute video on leadership where this guy has this shirtless lone dancing nut on a grassy knoll at a conference by Derek Sivers, I think his name is, who created this video, uh, shows how this young gentleman who's uh, 
looks like a lone shirtless dancing nut, it creates a movement. Um, it's a fantastic video. Uh, check it out on our Facebook uh, um, Facebook fan page um, where he creates a movement. What we did is we pointed all our traffic to um, such things as this, our like to see tabs. What can this lone shirtless nut teach you about business? Now, if someone wants to see that, they have to like it. And when they like it, they get to see the video. So in our world, we did that across a, a bunch of different uh, calling cards. So I showed you for before um, how we used an ebook was one of them. Um, we used video, which was another one again. And then we pointed all marketing to it. Lorna Saxby's asked it, so what you're offering is free then? Yes, exactly. Um, well, actually, not exactly right. I'm not offering it entirely for free. I'm, it, it's costing that person a like. Now, this is interesting. Um, Facebook has changed its terms and conditions recently, and they've made it so that you cannot say offer free product for a like. It's kind of like a bribe, right? So the answer to that is usually something that you can host within Facebook like that video because Facebook want you to spend more time more time in Facebook. So that was the way I got around that, uh, put, putting a, a video behind a like to see tab. I want to show you this in action because because uh, I've just run through a whole bunch of stuff very, 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 very fast. Someone has also asked, how do you make one? And I shall show you Flavor Flav. What a dude, Flavor Flav. Okay, I'm going to show you this in action. Up here, you have all your tabs on Facebook. Uh, you, can you see the little things flashing? You can't see my mouse. This here is Lesson of the Shirtless Nut. Okie dokie. Slow internet connection. Here we go. I think because I'm running a webinar doing this at the same time, it's, uh, it's having trouble. So when someone clicked like, this is what they got to watch. They got to watch this video, and they got to learn all about this, dantless, this, sh this shirtless dancing nut and his three-minute video about leadership. But at the top, I've got want more free stuff. I don't know if you can see this. Want more free stuff, look under the video. And then under the video, I've got a bunch of different things that people can sign up for. Need venture capital? There's an ebook. Sleeping your way to the top. Cheapy, cheap, cheeky, clever, free. Start a business in seven days. All right, I'm going to click on one of these these things, the ebook. Now I could have pointed someone, I could have pointed someone to uh, a website and collected their email address, or as you will see here, I've created another landing page within Facebook where someone can get this particular ebook in exchange for an email address. Right, so some of you are probably going, ah, oh, I see where you're heading because I remember that the first topic today was how to manage, the second topic was build, and the third topic was monetize. Okay? Someone in Nick Schildberger has asked, is the like for the fan page or just that item? When they like your fan page, that item will become available to them and they have liked you forevermore. So next time they appear on a like to see tab, which might be another one like this one here and the screen in front of you, that little, uh, that little like to reveal image will not appear. That little like to reveal image will not appear. Why? Because they are already a fan of yours. All right. Back to the back to the presentation. Let's see how this is going to work. All right. That's the two, that's that there, uh, facebook.com Antil Magazine. That's the app that I use if you ever want to check it out. But someone wants to know the mechanics of putting this all together. I've just had a look at the time. I'm going to save that for question times, question time. But what I use, there are a number of different tools. One is called North Social. One I think is called F uh, Five Minute Facebook Fan Page. They're all really simple tools that dudes like me can figure out. I would possibly say go to Google and type in like to see, Facebook like to see tabs or something like that and see what comes up. But I'll tell you what, when we get to the um, question time, what I might do is I might run through a list of the tools that I use and after 
this uh, after this webinar, I will send you a list to all these tools because I've noticed that it's 12:29, so I've got to keep moving. Alrighty. So the last item on my agenda, the third item on my agenda is monetize. See, this is the thing, right? Everybody's talking about, you know, as I said, you know, Facebook is the largest social media network in the world, as I said before. It's like the pub of the internet. And for that reason, people discount it as a business tool. Well, firstly, let me say, how many, how many times have you done business in a pub? Personally, myself, many times. Some of the best business deals I've ever done were in a pub. And that's why, and the reason why is that people are in a relaxed frame of mind. But when you're in that pub environment and you're on your second schooner or your second cheeky glass of Chardonnay, you don't turn around and stick a contract in front of their face and say, buy from me, right? Buy from me. No, you can't, you can't do that. It's, it's wrong. It doesn't feel right. But what you might do is you might swap business cards and say, why don't I get back to you on Monday and let's do some work together? And the person says, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Then you say, how about those Sydney Swans that won the football the other weekend and you're back into a social setting? The problem that most people have when they start using something like Facebook for business is, uh, yes, they try to close on the first date. They try and get someone to marry them when they've barely even invited them for a coffee and they haven't had a chance to meet parents. So what you may have noticed from what I was uh, showing you there in terms of um, my like to see tab, my end goal for just about anything on Facebook is to get a, an email or a highly pre-qualified lead and bring them into a more commercial environment such as my website or my email newsletter or some other way where I can connect with them in, in a more commercial context. So let's have a look at this, monetize. Does anyone online at the moment have a website that sells stuff? It's like an e-commerce site and it's just got stuff that you can buy. I've got a bunch of yeses, why don't you tell me what you're selling? Jennifer and Bazana and Lorna and Michael again and uh, Craig, what are some of the things that you're selling? on your website. Lady shoes, teas and totes, cloth doll patterns, DVDs, yes, mini projectors and tours online, herbal tea, many, 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 many different things. Well, for you, there are now a bunch of different tools that you can use to quickly and easily and relatively cost effectively replicate your online business store on Facebook. Um, the one that I hear the most talk about, but I've got to admit I don't use it because I'm not in the business of selling stuff on my Facebook fan page, is something called the Equid Storefront app. And when I've looked at it, it really just does look like an online store. What you would be doing is you are replicating your website store within the construct of Facebook. Now why might you do that? Well, if people are walking down the high street, and they're window shopping to buy clothes, it pays for you to have a presence on that high street. If it's Facebook and people spend their time on Facebook and enjoy their time on Facebook and enjoy socializing and messing around on Facebook, I would assume that it makes sense to be having to add a storefront within the construct of Facebook. The other thing that you can bet your bottom dollar is that the moment that someone starts to create someone starts to create a, um, a, a storefront app for Facebook, I'm sure they're going to pack it with nice little shareable tools where when someone buys something, they can tell all their friends on Facebook that they just bought it. So if you're selling stuff online, uh, check it out, the Equid storefront app, but I'll tell you what, then tell me what you think of it. All right. There's probably a couple different ones, and uh, and I'd imagine that they are easy to set up because most Facebook apps are easy to set up. But give it a go and tell me what you think. Because if someone's playing around on on Facebook, it's like you know, it's like the high street. They probably want to buy something on face uh, on Facebook. Okay, but not everyone online is obviously uh, got selling stuff online. Not everyone listening today. A lot of people are probably in B2B sales positions, maybe they are, they're consultants, uh, maybe they don't sell anything online. The relationship that they build is more akin to that environment where they sit down, have a coffee with someone, they talk about what they can do, and then they convert that contact into a customer. They go from a lead to a customer. Well, there's a nice bridging tool that I recommend. 
It's called Wufu, and it's a survey builder. It's a bit like SurveyMonkey. It's in fact even owned by SurveyMonkey, but it's so much better. Um, it's been around for a while. SurveyMonkey bought it about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and it's a survey builder. So what a survey builder lets you do, it allows you to create checklists. A checklist can be something as simple as something as simple as um, well, if you're reading a, a teenage girl's, girl magazine, it would be something like, does my boyfriend really love me? That's highly compelling. Um, it's, uh, it it, it's, it, it uh, satisfies curiosity, vanity, a whole bunch of things. Your clients are actually the same. I'm sure there are certain things that they fear. Uh, I was speaking at a conference the other day and there was a man who looked after administrations and receiverships. So. You know, a survey for him would be something like, is your business likely to survive administration? Take our checklist. I'll tell you what, folks, that is so much more compelling than a contact us page. Contact us page is contact me, contact me. But a survey is like, can I help you by answering some key questions? In return, the person usually gives their name, their phone number, their email address, tells you how many employees they have, what sort of budget they've got to spend, and a whole bunch of other random things. Wufu is what I use for that particular purpose. Now, Wufu, you can also create Wufu forms and once again embed them within Facebook. So someone's messing around on Facebook, you can say, take our survey and take them directly to it. Or you can promote it, even the same way I talked about using um, a calling card or a video, the checklist can even be your calling card if it's compelling enough to your target audience. The other good thing about Wufu is that uh, the other good thing about Wufu is that um, you can also attach it to PayPal. So if you don't want to go crazy like the Equid storefront app because you've got ten things you want to sell, you've got one thing that you want to sell on Facebook. You can use uh, Wufu as a survey builder. So it can be like a payment gateway form is, is another way of looking at it. And then you just link it with your PayPal account. And then suddenly you've got a way to take commercial transactions to th through PayPal quickly. Um, but once again, if you're a consultant or in the B2B space, I would say rather use Wufu as a checklist to get a highly, highly detailed lead. The third tool that I recommend is one called Aweber. Aweber is, uh, is, is, is a really simply, it's an email management tool like Constant Contact, like MailChimp, like a whole bunch of other ones. D does anyone use anything like MailChimp or Constant Contact or anything like that? They've said yes, can you tell me what they are? Lots of people use MailChimp, Constant Contact, always interactive. Vision 6, a good Australian one, that one. Um, Office Autopilot um, uh, has been recommended as better than MailChimp and Aweber. Cool. The reason why I use Aweber is once again, uh, it's fairly easy to embed uh, Aweber once again as a landing page within Facebook. But also the reason why I like it, and a lot of the other ones do this as well too, is that it allows you to set up an autoresponder an autoresponder tool. So someone signs up for something for free, like get this ebook on how to raise venture capital. And when they sign up, um, it can trigger a series of emails, say weekly emails, fortly, fortnightly emails, month, monthly emails that provide other content or information that's likely to be of interest to your target market. Now, an example might be um, someone signs up for my uh, venture capital ebook, and it says, "Congratulations! Uh, thank you for signing up for the ebook. Uh, if you would like, you can now get an email every week for the next ten weeks. The ten things that you must always do when raising venture capital." Now, there's a couple reasons for doing this. One, as long as those emails, when they arrive, point them back to your blog or your website or your Facebook fan page, it's an automated way of generating re, uh, repeat traffic. Another reason is because you can add a PS or whatever it is if you want to sell something and it can have a word like, and it can say, PS, why don't you buy this thing from me? Why don't you buy this t-shirt from me like that person said? Or why don't you buy this herbal tea from me? That's the PS. But I wouldn't make it the focus, not straight away. 
The other thing as well is that if you have uh, that relationship like that I was talking about before where you're in a B2B scenario or a consultancy or something like that, sometimes somewhat your clients don't make decisions quickly. In fact, they rarely do. In almost any consulting or B2B environment, there's a lead time of something like three to six months. Now, if that's the case, wouldn't it make sense to have someone to engage with you, connect with you by getting hold of something like this lead magnet thing, because uh, they're engaged by it. The lead magnet, as I said before, could be a checklist, it could be an ebook, it could be a video, it could be something else. But what that does is it triggers a series of emails, as I said, once a week, once a fortnight, once a month, however frequently seems appropriate to you, and it engages with this target audience on an ongoing basis. This is lead nurturing. Thank you, Jane Herring, for using that expression, who is using ca campaign monitor for lead nurturing. We can lead nurture over an extended period of time, or as I like to say, in your sleep or in your, in your underpants. I love this because what generally happens is that maybe after that second or third video or piece of content or ebook or whatever it is, if they're your target market, they will let you know and they will call you and I'm talking about minimizing or never having to make those cold calls ever again. That's the way, I, that's the way that I do it. So when it comes to monetizing, I'm not suggesting Okay, well, well actually, let's, let's, let's take this back to the beginning. Let's look at the three things that we've got here. Manage, build, and monetize. So when we're talking about populating the page, I would say uh, engage with images, videos, quotes are good, uh, links to, uh, to, to materials that your target audience are going to be interested in. Uh, links to perhaps uh, your own blog, if that's something that they're likely to be interested in. But don't go the hard sell. Now, we might occasionally promote events on our Facebook fan page, and we obviously promote webinars as well too. But we don't ask people to marry us on the first date. We try not to, at least anyway. Um, Peter Vroomer said, lead nurturing is what Atlassian do very well to bet, build their business. If you haven't heard of Atlassian, it's actually the uh, it's actually an Australian technology company that's about to list and it could be Australia's first technology company to achieve a valuation of a billion dollars. A billion dollars. In fact, people are saying it's going gonna, it's gonna to list it with a valuation of about two billion dollars. Now, this is fantastic for a country that's so dependent and relying on, on minerals and, and uh, primary industries. Well done, Atlassian, but Peter Vroom has, has pointed out that that's how they do it. The second thing is you, you obviously need to build your fan base in the first place. place. Now, the, the, the best suggestion that I can have, we had some great ones before, said so people said add compelling content, specifically content that people are likely to share. Competitions are great. Uh, um, all of those things that people suggested before are, are great, particularly ones that have a, have a viral impact. But the one that I discovered that was, was the most effective is creating a calling card or creating a series of calling cards and putting them behind a like to see tab. People are pretty, you know, they're pretty cool when they like say, oh yeah, I like to watch this video, all I have to do is like this, yeah, yeah, um, whatever you, you know, I'm just going to click on it. Yes, and uh, Fernie uh, Chan, Chanzamuth has pointed out, as I mentioned before, that you must use an app to run a contest, otherwise you are vi violating Facebook terms and conditions. So keep, a, keep an eye on Facebook's terms and conditions. As I said before, you can't bribe people for likes with products and the like, but you can invite them to check out other things on your Facebook fan page such as some of the things that I've shown you. And the third one, as I said, is monetize. So don't go for the jugular. Don't go straight, you know, straight, you know, someone, say, like my fan page, someone likes it, then you say, buy my stuff. But I don't know you. As I said before, you know, you don't do that when you're in the pub and you've met someone for the first time. Let them get to know you. Hopefully give them a chance to provide your email address to provide their email address, maybe engage in a checklist and provide a higher level of detail about themselves. And, and if you're in the business of, uh, of selling stuff online, perhaps give them an easier opportunity to uh, make an impulse buy, as someone used that word, someone actually used that word before when I was talking about it, an impulse buy where they can jump straight into your Facebook fan page and buy something. But I would say the smart way to monetize is in initially 
go for the email address. Get people into your community. Get people familiar with their brand, with your brand. Get people engaging with you through status updates. Uh, when you put a status update by, and uh, by sending them emails, nurturing your leads over time. All right, I think I've been doing pretty good for uh, for time. Um, I do have a short gratuitous plug alert about upcoming events. Um, very quickly, I'm involved in uh, two uh, events over the next month. One is called Connect and Do Business and it's happening in Melbourne on the 17th and 18th of October. And it's a two-day event, uh, in, and the target is, the, the focus is sales, lead generation, and social media. That's Connect and Do Business, which I'm doing in partnership with Anthony Gaddy, if you know that dude. Super smart dude. The second one I've got is Content Creation for Monetization. Uh, and, uh, and to be specific, it's how to create and monetize online content, the sort of stuff that we're talking about now. And I'm running that in Brisbane. Um, actually, I've changed the dates for that. It's actually the 8th and the 9th of November. And the Sydney one has already sold out. Sorry, guys. And uh, Anne-Marie, I'm not bringing this one to Adelaide yet, but perhaps reach out to me offline and hassle me, and I'll go and I'll bring it to, uh, and I'll go bring it to Adelaide. Um, specifically, if I want to bring the focus of these ones here, the focus of content creation for monetization is uh, it's two days. On the first day, I'm going to be helping everyone in the room build and create their own lead magnet in the room on the day, help them build a landing page in the room on the day, which is more effective than, and I'm not just talking about uh, landing pages in Facebook, I think that they're more effective than home pages, and I think in terms of the building blocks for an online strategy, I think that they're essential, and I'm also going to be talking about ascension models. So that there's the kind of thing that I'm talking about, what I was talking about before, where you don't go ask someone to marry you on the first date. It's about turning a free lead or a $30 sale into like a $30,000 customer. Um, and for the Connect and Do business, it's more focused on how to get leads, how to close, and how to use social media to do all that sort of stuff. So if you're in Melbourne and you're involved in um, B2B sales, consulting, one-on-one uh, -on -one relationships, that two days is for you. The first day, Anthony Gaddy is going to be running through all these amazing techniques that he uses to, 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 to run sales meetings, to attract leads and prospects. And the second day, I'm going to be running through a whole bunch of social media stuff. We've got a guy, it's been uh, Tim Williams, two and a half hours on LinkedIn. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Damien Blumenkrank is going to be doing an hour on how to use video. Cool stuff. Yes, I will answer how much it will cost. These uh, courses I normally run for eighteen hundred bucks for two days, but as you also has, as you probably got to know me a little bit by now, I've always got a super discount for my Antil friends and my Undy Empire friends. So um, at the end of this webinar, there's a survey, and if you want to complete that survey and get all the cool stuff and get the access to this slideshow, to get the recording, to get a free trial of Citrix GoToWebinar, go complete that exit survey and I'll send you the code and the links and you can make it along to these days, which really works out to be, what's that, 400 and, I don't know, something rather bucks for, per day, which is pretty good. I think it is anyway. Okie dokie. So, um, as I said before, when I get to the end, there are five great reasons to complete the exit survey. One, get the recorded version. Get the links to the tools. Get the discount code uh, to the live event, the two events that I just talked about there. Uh, get your free trial from Citrix GoToWebinar. Today, I have done this entirely on my own, and it's been a little bit frightening, but I have. Uh, using their tool and, of course, help us do a better job. Your feedback matters. Uh, next time, for example, someone won't be walking around above me in high-heeled shoes, if anyone can hear that. Sorry if it's a distraction. So question time. Time to ask me questions. And thanks for saying good job that people are just doing that. Um, um, thank you, Christine, and thank you, Fran Francis. Thank you, Lorna. Um, we do have, uh, I've, I've been, I've, I've run to schedule for the first time in a long time today, so we've got 10 minutes to take questions. Does anyone have any questions? Gee, lots of people are saying, good job. Hope you're going to hang around. Question time. 
Thank you, Flavor Flav, for telling me a lot of good quality content. I cannot have done it that well, dudes. <laughs> You're asking me about the, the online course and the webinar, um, and uh, um, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll send you to a link. I, uh, I prefer not to uh, not to turn the last ten minutes into a into a sales spiel. Here we go, Wayne Pryor. How do you win over a dinosaur business with an arcade uh, management that doesn't believe in it? <laughs> you know what, Wayne. You are so not alone. Do you know what the simple thing is? Do you know the simple thing is, Wayne? When someone walks into your business's office, their manager's office, and they say, boss, we need a new server, your boss turns around and says, why? And the reason why the boss says why is because he wants to know, or she wants to know, is it going to save your organization money, or is it going to make your organization money? The problem about social media is that Management seems to fall into two camps. The first camp is one where they go, we've got to be on social media, quickly, let's set up a Facebook fan page. And then three weeks later, they've got 150 fans and nothing is happening. By the way, if you've got more than 150 fans on your Facebook fan page, you're doing well. So to get between about, to get from about 150 to 300 is like the valley of death. In Australia, you can get to about 150 quite quickly through your friends and personal networks and then you will stall. If that's you and you've stalled, let me know. The other, uh, the other um, so that's the first one. They race online and they're not thinking about how am I going to do this to make me money or save me money. They, they, race on, they race online because they think they've got to do it. In your world, Wayne, the answer is how is it going to make me money? Is it, how is it going to save me money? Now, as I said before, your customers do use Facebook. Your customers do use LinkedIn. Your customers do use Twitter. And the great thing about it is that you can segment. So before, someone did ask, <laughs> Jay Palmer, oh, we're at 149. I will be your 150, Jay Palmer. You tell me where to go. Poor Jay Palmer is one of those people stuck at 149. That's hilarious. Um, I will be your 150 if you'd like me to. So is it going to make me money or is it going to save me money? You need to demonstrate to your employees that it can do both of those things. That's how you get from, uh, from working in an arcane environment. Perhaps that's a discussion that we can have online. What other questions have we got? Andrew Burford, how do we get from 150 to 300? Okay, someone before when I ran through some of the, some of the actions to build a Facebook fan page, someone said ads. Now, if you do want to get there quickly, Ads are a good way to go, but I say this with some pretty strong caveats. One is, don't just run ads saying, like my Facebook fan page, or come to my Facebook fan page, or just pointing to your Facebook fan page. Do what I said before, create a like to reveal tab, and put a lead magnet behind it, and make that lead magnet the focus of your ads. Now before, you know, we talked about an arcane business that doesn't know how to use it. Not so long ago, I used Facebook to sell lawn bowls products. Now that seems weird. Facebook lawn bowls. Lawn bowls is played by old people. Old people don't use Facebook. Well, that's bollocks. Um, baby boomers and above are the fastest growing users of Facebook. Why? I guess it's because their children are having children and they want to see what their children look like. But for us, we ran ads for that particular campaign and the ad did not say buy our lawn bowls product. It said, would you like to radically improve your lawn bowls? Download the tip book. And we ran that ad, this is the great thing about Facebook, only to people who had expressed an interest or desire through their preferences in Facebook in lawn bowls. So we were just running ads that targeted people who were already interested in lawn bowls. Then we ran it through that sort of funnel that I talked before. They clicked on the link, of which I think we paid something like 19, uh, 19 cents a click. They clicked on the link, then a certain percentage of it liked the tab, and then downloaded the ebook. We got their email address, and we began a nurturing process. What we discovered is by the time we got them to the page where they could sign up for an email newsletter, I think it was like three in five signed up for the email newsletter, and for a glorious period of a couple of months, one in 18 people who, we, who signed up for their email newsletter bought our product. That there is a staggeringly large, high, significant return on investment. 
as I said, it, only, it actually only lasted for about four or five bucks because I suspect, I su suspect that we uh, that we actually uh, fished the pond dry. We ran out of Facebook fans. Um, we ran out of Facebook fans that were into lawn bowls in Australia. Say la vie, so be it. I did prove that they were there. It just didn't turn out that there was many of them there. So, what other questions have we got? Okay, what is the difference between the types of Facebook fa fa Facebook pages? Uh, initially, it was all about. Um, um, oh, gee, that's a tough one, Shanti. Initially, it was all about. Um, uh, Everybody had their own business pages, including Antil, but they were very difficult to engage. Then we, then they changed it to, they were profile, they were, they were basically a profile for your business. Uh, then it became clear to and obvious to everyone that the Facebook fan page was a better vehicle for your business. If you've got one of those old, archaic um, profile pages for your business, just let it languish. Put something in the top of the page and point into your Facebook fan page and create the Facebook fan page because it's just got more tools and better tools for creating a viral for creating a viral effect. What other questions do we have? We ran a special where the customers qualified for that special deal by liking our Facebook fan page. We're now at four hundred likes. Well done, Pauline. Uh, Caruana, there you go. Uh, Pauline went from a hundred, uh, got to the, got over the valley of death um, by uh, by running a with a quali with a customers qualified for that special deal by liking our Facebook fan page. So that's a clever way of doing it. Anne Marie Gill said, "Facebook old people love Facebook. They don't they don't have to go anywhere." Ah, Boomsha, very very true. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're winding up. Uh, it's, uh, I've got a couple minutes before to go, so any last final questions before we wind up? Oh, thank you for the people who are saying goodbye. Are you rock um, like a stone? I don't know. Thank you, Flavor Flav again. I love your name. Uh, thank you, Kerry Grace. Thank you, Robin Fawcett. Um, how to uh, now? Now, now I'm getting some serious questions. Rock on, man. Good job, Will Todd. Okay, um, you rock like cats in bow ties. Thank you, Megan. Fabuloso. Thank you, Melina. All right, folks, what I'm going to try and do is uh, a bunch of questions suddenly came flying at me when I said I've got one more question, and they shot past my vision very, 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 very fast. So I think that I might just have to try and answer some of those questions, some of those questions in the follow-up email. Thanks again, everyone. It's been a pleasure. I hope you had a great time, and uh, make sure that you complete that exit survey when you log off. So cheerio and have a fun day. Catch you later.